Good afternoon, YouTube. Uh, I just received my Jero annealer, the Jero case annealer, and today I'm going to try it out for the first time. But before I do that, I'm going to upgrade the potentiometer to give it a little bit uh, more reliable and consistent readings for for your dial. This uh, annealer runs about $500. Uh, I, ha I bought it with uh, wheels to do two different size cases and ended up being $504 shipped. Now this is the existing potentiometer where you set your speed control for how fast the cases turn while you're annealing. This is the new potentiometer I'm going to put in. It has much better uh, readings on the on the adjustments. First thing you need to do is take this little case off the back. There's a screw here on the front. There's another one under under the bottom here. Already had it mostly out. And you can see down here, just got three wires right here. We'll take this potentiometer off, pull this out, unsolder those three wires right there. Okay, so step number one will be to remove the old potentiometer. Just pull the knob off. Pull this out. And I'm going to unsolder those. Okay, there we go. Waiting for the soldering iron to heat up and then we'll get that off of there. My soldering iron is heated up. There we go. Okay. Now one thing we need to do before we put on the new switch, after we've taken this old uh, potentiometer out, as you can see, the diameter on the threads and the switch itself is a little bit smaller on the original one versus the new one, which means the hole is a little bit too small in diameter, so I'm going to have to drill that hole out to make sure this one fits. I'll do that and be right back. Okay, we now have our hole enlarged. I used a 3 8 inch drill bit. I didn't see any reason to bore you with uh, instructions on how to make a hole larger, so I didn't bother keeping that on the video. Um, the 3 8 inch hole now seems to be just right. Just a tiny bit of wiggle room. And there we go. All ready for the dial once I get it all soldered together. Okay, now that we've got this all soldered together as it should be, we're going to put it back together. This little spacer goes on here. And we'll adjust it. Okay, this needs to be, this little spacer needs to be notched down. As you can see, there's a little notch in the bottom of 
this. Sure, snug is more than enough. There's also a little uh, nub right there to go into that slot on the bottom just to keep it lined up. Then there's also a little Allen screw here that you use to lock that down on the shaft. Okay. Tighten that down. There you go. This is your tension. Dial easy. You can lock it in down. Doesn't move. And as you can see, you have one through nine. And goes all the way up you have 10 total turns all right there you have it new potentiometer installed ready to go the only thing left to do put the guard back on Oops, might help if I put it right side up. One on the bottom. Now, once you have this potentiometer installed, you're going to want to zero it. As you can see on the dial there, this is shut off. This is just to where it stops, and it's actually on 7.4. So I'm going to remove this set screw. Loosen that up. I'm going to turn this to zero point zero. Stick it back on. Tighten the set screw back down. And now, as you can see, it's it's on zero. So you just set it for whatever caliber of brass you're annealing. Record that reading. Next time you need to do the 308, put it back where it needs to go. 223, 338, what have you. No more having to figure out the exact adjustment every time. Just keep it recorded here. Lock it down. Doesn't move. There you go. Thanks for watching.